Hello everyone. It's James again. And before I start today's video. I just want to quickly say. All work in this video contains 100% original content of and by myself James Smith, otherwise known as Begood4000, and was uniquely created with normal software, by myself James Smith. As I purchased commercial rights from normal to produce my unique and original video with this software. Commentary is uniquely my own thoughts, feelings, and expressions. Now that I have that out of the way. I do hope your day is going better than fantastic. And your journey to self-betterment is going better than fantastic as well. Today I wanted to answer a very important question. And that is why you might have this overbearing feeling of guilt or shame after your relationship with a narcissist has come to an end. No matter it be a former so-called friend. Someone you dated or married to. Or someone in your family like a mother. Father. Brother or sister or cousin. So forth and so on. Well there is more than one reason why. Why you are likely feeling this way. Even though you know the narcissist was horribly in the wrong. The first reason is. This is likely how you were programmed to think and react. And possibly you weren't programmed by this narcissist over there. But you might have been programmed by a narcissist deep deep in your past. Likely a mother or father. You see. It's this shame. Self-doubt and guilty feeling that even turns us into chronic confessors. And that's what the narcissist wants so they can use every bit of data they get from us to trap us. And to try to use us as a lifetime piece of narcissistic supply. So you have been likely trained through gaslighting, projection, name calling and all kinds of other things. So you have now a bunch of default reactions and feelings that can be triggered at the drop of a hat. Why is this important? So you can know where these feelings come from so you can do a better job at heading off these feelings when they start to come over you. The other reason why is we know no one is perfect. We are always looking for what we did wrong in the relationship. And yes. We can indeed find something's wrong. Here's a big one. Sometimes the narcissist in your life. Let's say it's someone you are married to. Is just flat out treating you like dirt in every way imaginable. And they get you so angry. You start to try to play the narcissist's game with them. Which might lead you to as well mistreating this person when you should really be spending your time and energy looking for an escape. And now you are sitting alone thinking about such misdeeds and mistakes on your end. Emotionally beating yourself up for the cause of this relationship ending. Now. Though what you did was wrong. You have to ask yourself. Was this really the cause of the relationship ending? Here's the thing. Regardless of what you were doing. This person would still be a manipulator and someone that enjoys the pain of others. You can't change that. Now yes did you for a short time fall into that same role of mistreating someone too. Yes. That was wrong. And it's something you should not repeat in the future. However. Was it the cause of the relationship coming to an end? No. Actually if you search deep down the relationship should have come to an end a long long time ago. And you should have been the one looking for the best escape option to get out safely and soundly. Ask God for his forgiveness that you didn't handle things right. Ask him to guide you on how to handle future situations better. And accept his forgiveness when God gives it. And use what he gives you to handle future situations better. Silence is golden. If someone is mistreating you. You don't have to ask or explain or debate with this person. Because that's exactly what they want. Narcissists are oftentimes compared to demons. And demons love when people try to interact with them. Because the people usually come out on the losing end of the stick. This is why God put a veil between us and them. And we shouldn't be seeking out to interact with such beings. So if you meet a person that is acting like a demon. Don't debate. Don't argue. Don't try to prove your point move on and away from them. And not every demon or narcissist will show up acting like an evil terrible person from the start. 
narcissist and demons might show up acting like they have your best interests at heart. And as time goes on they will try to break you down and act out of your nature and the way God would like you to act. We've all been there. We may be said something that even years later we feel shame for it. That's the devil not wanting you to accept God's forgiveness so you can't move forward. This is what I've talked about. Narcissists want to keep you stuck because even if you are as ordinary as ordinary as can be, you still have a gift. And it's up to you to find out what that gift is. And if you are in the mucky muck of emotional pain, along with worldly problems, problems because you allowed a demon into your life by the way of a narcissist, you are now unable to fulfill what your life mission is. Maybe your life mission is to be a good neighbor. To smile and give joy to those that you come into contact with. Maybe that's who you were meant to be. But if you are stricken with all kinds of problems because of the narcissists in your life, you might be barely able to get through your day let alone being able to tap into your gift of kindness and love. Maybe you are good with cars and you really want to just be the best mechanic you can be. But you are so mentally tired you can't get started with learning what you need to do to make that happen. Narcissists and demons don't want you to take the first step to a better life. Because that first step leads to a second step. And a third and a fourth. And along the way. They know you might just inspire someone else. And they might inspire someone else. And joy and love will spread. And narcissists don't want that. The last reason why you have this feeling of shame and guilt is because. You don't have a life going for you possibly. Where you can actively move on. You see. You might have an accurate assessment of your wrongs. And you have asked God for his forgiveness. But because you have no family or loved ones. And places to go and things to do and people to interact with. It's easy for you to sit with your own thoughts and the devil to tempt you out of accepting your forgiveness. This is why staying active is important. The Bible talks about this. An idle mind is the devil's playground. Not just because he might tempt you to do something bad. But he might be able to tempt you to think something bad about yourself. It's like I've said before. Those with great families and friends. When they have rough patches in their life. Where they might have made some bad life choices and mistakes. These people usually have a family to go to. To visit to stay with, and to be able to heal around. It's very nice when we are healing along with having the love of others isn't it? Well we don't have the luxury. But for those that do, they tend to move forward a lot quicker and a lot better. Because their mind isn't idle. The devil has less of a chance to enter and plant seeds of negativity. Where most of us are alone. And the devil sees that as his chance to make us relive our mistakes over and over and over again. With that said. I thank you for the question. I hope my answer was of help. With that said. I thank you all for your support. And I do hope your day is blessed. And until next time. Bye for now. And be good to yourself.